having tr a tr you know, tremendous success. Mm -hmm. Nicole is a teacher for five years. Mm -hmm. She's been at two elementary schools. Mm -hmm very passionate and uh, has some you know strong feelings about what causes some of these disruptions so let's start with okay we've been talking about this problem for months now we said we need to go big on solutions an hour dedicated to solutions what did you think what did you think of the show <sighs> I, I thought it was great I loved it um, that first of all there's a finally a light on it because um, I feel like we've been in the dark about it for so long um, that it was just, it, that it wasn't as big a problem as it was, or maybe this is just my district <clears throat> or just my school. Um, and then you start talking and you realize, oh, it's not just me, it's other schools. And then, oh my gosh, it's everybody. What do we do? Right. Um, so when I first saw your program, I thought, oh my gosh, wow, this is really coming out. And Thank you. <laughs> that there's there's something being done. Um, that there's there are people with voices making this a, a reality of what we're going through. Um, so the show is good. Oh, I, thank I you. Thank great. you for saying that. But what was it like, Nicole, uh, being part of that experience with you know fourteen educators mm -hmm. and or administrators and parents, lawmakers, and people that had all different points of view? What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm a new teacher. Um, I, I would consider myself still a baby in the field. Um, and oftentimes our, um, our, you know, our professional learning communities are centered around folks who uh, have the same role. And one of the benefits that I found, although difficult to sit in the room with someone, um, folks who are doing this work together, we don't oftentimes get an opportunity to talk across the table. Um, and what you were able to put together was the different positionality of folks who are mm -hmm. impacted and impacting education. And I think there's great benefit in that. That doesn't mean that it's always going to be harmonious. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that we're always going to be um, in, agreement, in agreement. Um, but I am a, a true believer that a change really only happens when conversations are had, when we are able to hold multiple perspectives. Mm -hmm. I'm able to share the perspective that we have from the, from the experience that we honed. Um, but then also being able to hold someone else's perspective is, is true magic. Mm -hmm. I think kids do that really, really well. I see that in my fourth grade classroom all the time, their ability to agree to disagree and then go play. And somehow as adults, I feel like we've lost that. And so what we were able to do mm -hmm. um, in this hour-long special was to practice that, and it was tough. But I think more of it is necessary. Such a great point. But we couldn't have done it without you and you and all of the people that said, yes, I'm going to set aside mm -hmm. hours of my time to come in and talk. And... Um, so thank you so much again for doing that. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you learned. I mean, you guys are on the front lines of this. Um, after being in that room for, you know, an hour and a half, what did you take away from that experience? Why don't you start, Sarah? Hmm. Or something that surprised <laughs> you? Maybe something that surprised you or what? Gosh. Um, I don't, I don't know if any... Things surprise me. I think I think you hit the nail on the head with just that there are so many different opinions about what it could be, and mm -hmm. and really having that conversation out in the open, um, and, and how we take a look at it on a whole bunch of levels. Mm -hmm. What happens at the at the teacher level, right. and then what happens at the administrative level, and then what happens at the state level? Right. Mm -hmm. That this is this is huge. Absolutely. Um, so I, I guess that was a big eye opener to me. Um, you know, being out in a little tiny district all by myself. <laughs> With, with just my teachers going through it every day, I, you, you really don't see a whole lot of that. Yeah. And then you realize that, yeah, even though our, our district is small, here's Portland Public, you know, and, and oh my gosh, and here's, here's state people going right. on. Um, so this is, this is big, mm -hmm. and, and it's nice to see that change, hopefully change is, is happening, and, and here's how we can start to do it together. Right. Um, because it's not just a small district problem, it's not a big district problem, it's all of us, and right. we all have to be part of the change. Right. What did you think, Nicole? What did you kind of walk away with um, that surprised you or something you learned? or I think, and I think Sarah, again, uh, we're complimenting each other by, I think, saying <laughs> the same thing, which kindred spirits, right? Right. <laughs> um, but I think the, one of the greatest things that I took away was compassion, mm -hmm. being able to sit in that space um, with Emily Brache, who was doing that work um, and had left the classroom because of mm -hmm. some of the things that she was experiencing um, and I know her. I was, I was able to work alongside and teach alongside her. Um, and the great deal of compassion that I had for the other educators in the space. Um, oftentimes we don't get to cross districts mm -hmm. and we don't get to cross buildings. Mm -hmm. And we should do this more often. And I think I alluded to that at some point in the special where, where I talked a little bit about 
Um, our, I think our kids are our, our, um, our children are informing us that this isn't working the way we've been doing it. Mm -hmm. And they're using the best tools that they have in their toolbox to get our attention. And I think we're on the right pathway by opening up these dialogues and having this discussion. So I left energized, although um, it was the reality of where we really are, to me it's solutions oriented when we get that many different perspectives around yes. the table and get an opportunity to talk. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that to me was one of the most poignant things was just the compassion I felt for other educators um, and the parents that were in the space mm -hmm. and some of the great ideas that they came up with with how, how they were impacting the campuses that serve their children. Um, and I, I just, I, I was, we do a lot of things around courageous conversations around race and there's a, mm -hmm. a compass where you're checking in and I left feeling very action oriented, like, wow, feeling like I'm ready to get started. But that's also five years in the game. Mm -hmm. And what I saw in that panel was teachers who were overwhelmed and who had been doing it a really long time. Um, and the solutions just don't come fast enough. Mm -mm. Such no. great points. You know, uh, something that a lot of people were interested in and I wish we would have talked about my boss and I were saying, you know, what would we have done differently? Mm -hmm. And there was one topic that everyone, it came in late and everyone was nodding their heads mm -hmm. and so in agreement. What was it? Andrew, yeah. first grade teacher yes, in Beaver the unicorn. Yes, <laughs> the, the unicorn. unicorn. <laughs> where, he, where he talked about technology. Yeah. Oh. And he said, you know, he's in a restaurant and there's an infant that can't even do anything, but he's holding a phone. The infant's yeah. holding a phone. And he said, one of my favorite quotes of the whole special, he said, no kid should have technology or in their hand unless it's a Kindle and they're reading mm -hmm. a damn book, he mm -hmm. said. Um, so what else, if we could have, if, if I could have gone back mm. and asked mm -hmm. your thoughts on technology, what would mm. you have said? How would you have answered? Uh, I'm a, I am, um, I like to hold multiple perspectives. That's an art. Um, and it, you have to practice it. It means that at one point I do understand where Andrew's coming from. I see that too. And it's hard to unplug, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. the, the era that I grew up in was pagers. And this idea of like <laughs> having a code and having to call someone back <laughs> and from a pay phone, that was real. Um, and then the two-way came out, oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> one of the things that I try to do in my classroom is teach digital citizenship. Mm -hmm. Technology isn't a bad thing if we are not teaching our students how to wield it with um, with intelligence. Having a computer in your pocket can be a great thing. Mm -hmm. It can be a great tool. I think what Andrew and many other teachers like him and myself are experiencing is, is a lack of both and. It's either let me stick you in front of this, let me put this in your hand, and that way I can get uninterrupted time to do what all of the myriad of other things that, that parents and guardians mm -hmm. have to do. And that's a real thing too. Mm -hmm. But then there also is, I want to have, I want my students to be able to complete, compete globally. Mm -hmm. I want them to be able right. um, to uh, know how within a moment to, to uh, get information, how to vet that information, how to determine the source of that information and the author's purpose in that information. And I can teach that. In order to teach that, I have to have one-to-one -one technology. Right. Because my curriculum isn't coming fast mm -hmm. enough or because, um, for a perfect example, what we did today, this is social studies being able to talk about civil rights movements and what people are doing with their bodies and putting their bodies over spaces to fight for democracy, it, that's the best curriculum that there is. Mm -hmm. I can't access that if I don't have technology. So I think where Andrew is really right is that there is no balance. And I think there needs to be a both and. Mm -hmm. There has to be a way for us to teach digital citizenship so that our, our students can compete globally in, an, in, a, in a market and in an, in an economy. But I also do think that we are losing that touch of mm -hmm. the familiarity of being able to, to engage in, in, in person conversation and dialogue. Yeah. And that is some of the disruption that we probably are seeing too. They're fortnight it out. It is interesting. It mm -hmm. is just fortnight every day and roadblocks and, yeah. and Zom's Royale. My students were like, yes, Ms. Watson knows the names. I know because I check your histories, people. <laughs> Zom's Royale. Okay, Sarah, would you, I wish oh, I would have asked that. That would have yeah. been a great answer for it the might special. Have been it might have been popular, but no, it's that what was I would have said. So what do you think, Sarah? Gosh, I mean, I... I really think that that this is also new, hmm. that that we're you know we did we grew up in an age where Oregon Trail we didn't have that yeah it was green <laughs> and that was it you know and, and so was your first phone and there was no text you just dialed the number, um, but but the world that we grew up in is not the same as the world that these kids are growing up right. in right right and because this is their generation right now we don't know what long term effects there are. So we don't know what their outcome is going to be. Um, I do agree with you that they do have to compete. 
Not only that, but this is the world they live in. This is reality. Now, someone was talking to me today about the library, and they were making jokes about where's the Dewey Decimal System. Ah, um, it's just not there. That. But but you know, there, there's there's technology everywhere. But we yeah. have to teach them that okay, no, we don't have Dewey anymore. But here's what we do have, and this is what you do. Right. Um, as a as a tool, using technology as a tool, and that's mm -hmm. that's their reality. Um, <coughs> you know, but at the same time, we do lack that. You know where where you go outside and you ride your bike. Right now you're now you're playing Fortnite. Right. Um, and, and there are skills to learn from that. And you know, then there's the other side of it that I know. I know my own kids get on me. They're like, put down the phone, mom. Yeah. Um, yes. It's like, the parents, oh gosh. Parents yeah. With screens. Parents yeah. with screens. Yeah. Totally. You know, it's like, okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's let's yeah, let's talk. All right. Cool. So balance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So balance. Do we have any questions, Jared? We have a lot of people watching. We have a lot of comments. Um, I can any I, comments I on what maybe they want us to get into, or mm -hmm. if they disagree, that's fine. There's not a lot of disagreement. I mean, I, I think that I'd, I'd like to read some of the comments, and maybe you can respond to them. Okay. Um, so Claudia, she said, Claudia Miller. Hi, Claudia. She said, we need more people on the front line supporting our children. We've lost so many educational supports mm -hmm. and people. Yeah over the past 25 years since I've been teaching. So she is a teacher as well. Oh. She said, poverty has increased. Children living in poverty has increased. Thank you for your reporting. Oh, awesome. I mean, that is what we yeah. Yeah. spent so, you know, much time talking about. so much time talking about. Yeah, so the, the need for supports. Yes. I yep. feel like that is something we've heard so much. And then the trauma, like, like mm -hmm. poverty. Well, that's just it. You have to. Happy Happy Teacher Appreciation Week, Claudia. Happy Teacher Yay. Appreciation Week. Happy Teacher Week. Appreciation Week. Goodness. And a big shout out to all my teachers. Yes. Um, I had to get that in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that that's where we started, is taking care of ourselves first. And it's the idea that you have to put on that oxygen mask first mm. and help yourself. At your elementary your, school. Yes. At your school. When yeah. you address this, address yes. this dis classroom yep. disruption. And okay. we had to heal ourselves first. Right. And, and there are times I look at our staff and our kids and I think, oh my gosh, we have so much more to do with staff because they're, they're true. They don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. And, and it's that first with teaching anyway, it's that balance between personal and professional always, <laughs> I cross that which, way. which is hard, you know, to take time for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you add that level of, of taking care of other kids or other people's trauma. Right. And, and before you know it, you're dysregulated. And you can't regulate somebody else when you're dysregulated. So that's that's really where we started and, and where we're going to keep going um, is, a, is addressing self-care mm -hmm. all around and addressing our own um, emotional issues so that we can help other kids regulate themselves. Yeah, I like how you said at your elementary school, you said the social emotional bus is pulling up. Yep. You don't have to get on it, but you can't, can't be in the way. Don't get in the way. Yeah. Stand in front of it. Yeah. And and what is your response, Nicole, to her, to her comment? <sighs> um... You know, I, as an African-American woman, come from the model of um, it takes a village. It does. Um, mm -hmm. And this work cannot be done in isolation. And you need your EAs. You need your paras. You need your sped professionals. You need your speech pathologists. You definitely need your, your librarians. You need your custodians. You know, your domestic engineers. Um, right? Yeah, fancy. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, you, you need your parents engaged. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... This is a this is an interesting issue. Um, I think that the way we've been doing schooling historically, um, we'd have to study what our purpose is around schooling, not education, but how we do schooling, how we mm -hmm. how we do this, um, and why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. Um, and I think some of the problems that we're seeing are, are evidence of that. And I think that when we lose, um, when we don't value the custodian in a building the EA support in a building, the paraeducator in a building, um, the message that that sends, um, I think, is what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And I think you need, you need all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. Not because there's a massive crisis and it's a problem, but because these are our babies. Mm -hmm. These are our babies. I think I was reading an article that said something around Beyonce's children have like six nannies. Six! <laughs> Not because they need six, yes. but because many hands make light work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you want the utmost care for your offspring and for your children, if we really say that, then our budgets are moral documents. Mm -hmm. And how we allocate funds and how we credential teachers and we credential support staff to be in our classrooms and in our buildings is evidence in the way we spend our money. And I think that our, 
our schools are not reflective of the, of the real values that I think we should be holding. Our children, my students, specifically the students of Willamina, the students of the teachers who are watching, they are our next leaders, mm -hmm. and we are going to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. We have a lot to answer to. And I'm nervous. I'm scared that when our students begin to realize that this is a service and that the building is theirs, schools are theirs, they belong to them. We just get the honor of walking in it every day, but they belong to them. And I think we're going to have a lot to answer to um, when, our, when our babies realize that we've been uh, doing some stuff kind of shadily and that our, our budgetary documents are not reflecting that they have value. Mm -hmm. And I think it comes down to dollars. And I, as a new teacher, admit that I'm learning that as I go, I'm realizing the power um, in, in how money is funded, but then also how it is allocated and how it's spent and how, who we hold accountable mm -hmm. for that. Um, and that's a lot for me to do just as an educator. My parents may not have that bandwidth, that capacity. Um, we talked a little bit, I think it was um, Adrian who talked about being self-actualized, that when our basic needs are mm, met, right. yes that when our basic needs are met, we get the opportunity to adhere to a higher level of that, of that chart, um, which started in an indigenous culture and then became a Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But the essentiality behind it is our baby's basic needs aren't being met. And we need not only teachers, but also educational supports, mm -hmm. all hands on deck, so that the village really can raise our children. Mm -hmm. That's great points. Yes, please. So we've uh, got more questions coming okay, in. Okay, great. Um, and also, I think this was directed uh, to you, Sarah. Uh-oh. Uh, Corey Farmer said, hi, boss. Hi, Corey. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Corey hi. runs our, our good. behavior program. She is she's great. awesome. That's she's great. Just Thank you, amazing. Corey. So she's she, probably got some way in. Yeah. <laughs> she's got some way in. Uh, Susan, uh, she said, Nicole Watson, thank you for speaking up. Yeah, okay. Nicole. Have you discussed how teachers need training in culturally relevant teaching, restorative oh, justice, come on, and baby. movement? And then she follows <laughs> that up with, how about the impact of 90% white teaching force in Oregon serving youth of color? I didn't say Can it. you speak about the need for educators? <laughs> Who reflect our communities? Oh, and if oh. she didn't watch our special, yeah. that is some that when we did brainstorm solution, mm -hmm. that was Nicole's number one thing. It was. I I work at a school um, that has predominantly black and brown teachers. Um, I have a, a teacher in our building who observes the Ramadan and is able to sit with students right now during the month of fasting um, and be able to talk to students about hijab and about um, about Muslim culture and and religion. And there is power in that. I think. Um, I, th I think that, like I said, the, the benefit is multiple perspectives. And I, I, as a gift, I, I get the opportunity of being in a room where my babies look like me. And that means that affords me the opportunity to give a look, mm -hmm. that affords me the opportunity to have a tone that their aunt would have, that their mother would have. I can snap my fingers and that means something. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a cultural mm -hmm. gift. It's not a... It's, it's a, it's, I don't have magic pixie dust that I spray in my classroom to make it what it is. It, it, it's, a, it's a part of the culture, and I think it's benefit when, we, when our teaching force gets to match the, the beautiful tapestry of, what, of the students that we serve. And then we fought that fought already. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we've resegregated ourselves all over again, um, again, is, is, my, is my ad that we, we really need to study how we're doing schooling and why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. But more than that, it's... it's we also don't have a pipeline. So I happen to go through one of the only pipelines for educators of color in, in the state of Oregon, specifically in the city of Portland that I know of, which is the Portland Teachers Program. Um, and that was housed through Portland Community College and Portland State University. And that particular program seeks to find educators of color um, and help um, empower, empower them to go through this program. And, and it's a tuition-based scholarship program, and, and that gets you, gets you through your tests. and all of these obstacles that you wouldn't be able to, to hurdle over. And without that program, I wouldn't be here. And how did you find this program? I was actually at Portland State University going to major in real estate finance. Mm -hmm. And the counselor <laughs> there, while we were waiting for my DARS report, shout out to my Vikings who know about the DARS report. I was waiting for my DARS report and this particular counselor whose name escapes me. He had these really cool glasses though. But anyway, he asked while we were waiting what I would have done if I didn't do real estate finance. At that time I was working for a real estate, commercial real estate company, um, and I was really good with numbers and escrow and was having a really great time, and I was gonna go back to get a degree in something different. And I told him, I said, I had been going to um, Juarez, Mexico, um, reading to children, and I think I miss, I would have I taught. 
Um, and he said, well, there's a program. Um, it's intense. You have to move back in with your parents, most likely. You have to sell all your earthly goods um, because it's intense. Um, the, the, the rigor of what we go through in that program really prepares you for the battlefield of teaching as a teacher of color in this field. Um, and I've got tons of comrades, warrior teachers, who've come through that program who are teachers of color, who are on the front lines um, doing this work. But we need more pipelines like that. Mm -hmm. But in order for that to happen, education has to be attractive. Mm. Mm -hmm. We have to compensate right, yep. people for the things. That, what if teachers are walking out, if teachers are paying money out of their own pocket, if teachers are making their own curriculum and making books and, yeah, and buying yeah. shoes, and <laughs> if we're doing mm -hmm. all these, it's not attractive to that person who wants to go get a master's and go work for a right. Fortune 500 company. We've got to also value teachers and the giftedness of what we bring to the classroom every day. We've got to value that so that it's attractive to our high school students who say, I want to go do that. Mm -hmm. Then you also end up having... For most of us, the reason we're here is because of a teacher. Yeah. Mine was Grace Harrington, who taught fifth grade um, at Boise Elliott, who was amazing, who didn't take my crap. When I walked in with trauma, she saw me and saw past my trauma and was able to heal my heart. But I didn't recognize her until I was in my adult years. Mm -hmm. So most of us are here because we had dynamic teachers, but that's not enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need a pipeline to okay. really get qualified. Uh, educators of color in our buildings because we're needed not just as support not just as custodians not just as counselors but actual teachers in the classroom because what we offer um, is just a different perspective and as we saw in your on the hour-long special it's necessary right okay great points uh, um, a follow-up to that sorry um, I'm done no more follow-up <laughs> no no well it's just a comment Santana Galavis said our daughter still misses having Miss Watson as her fifth grade what oh, who is that Santana Galavis. Um, next question for Sarah. Uh, she asked, Susan Kings, Willa Kingsford asked if you can share the names of the SEL programs you're using again. Yeah. A couple of your teachers chimed in and said you're using <laughs> they are PAX. Right. And I love my teachers. And ruler. ruler. <laughs> PAX and ruler. Yes. Yes. But she, uh, Susan yeah. said, I love how you told your teachers they can't stand in the way. You took charge of your school. Well done. We well need done. bold yeah. leaders. Yeah, and why don't we, um, why don't you get into, since we did spend a lot of time in the mm -hmm. special, talking about four years ago, you saw these costume disruptions, mm -hmm. you s changed everything for the last three years. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what else did you want to talk about in terms of what's oh, working? You know, did you feel like we missed anything? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's everything. I, I just, I, I just, I feel like it's, like, I got to start about the programs, but it, it's not. You know, and then I thought, well, maybe it's this, and maybe it's this, and there's so much that we do. Right. It's it is everything. It's it's a staff that a hundred percent of us are on board and committed, mm. and not just our teachers. It is our classified staff, and it is the bus drivers, because you never know when a student is going to connect. Yes. And it is all about building relationships right. first, because otherwise they don't care what you have Come to on. say. Come on. And it might be that custodian, and it might be that cafeteria. Right nutrition director um you know but you never know that's right so it's a hundred percent of every adult speaking the same language oh, wow. and so we started there and that's what the programs did is help us serve the majority of our kids um you know and then we had um the self-care and then we had um we have we have two rooms at our school um one is is very proactive so we tell we, we help our teachers look for those proactive signs that a kid is is gonna have some emotions soon you know their their hood goes up um, mm. or their you know their eyebrows go down or you know they tense up um, so we have them look for those physiological signs that okay this kid's gonna blow <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and if we can intervene then we do it um, so we we have a what's called the relaxation station and they go, it's a wellness room, it's a very sensory, um, the, the lavender and the low lighting. Yeah. And then we have different stations because with different needs, whatever it is. Um, so there's that. And then um, if we catch them on the reactive side, um, they're, they're tossing chairs or they're yelling profanity. Um, we have what's called ECHO, and that stands for each child has opportunities. Mm. And that's where our, our behavior coaches are located. Um, if they're in there, they're usually out <laughs> roaming. Um, but the idea is that when a kid is in a state of, of crisis, immediate crisis, 
they're not able to problem solve. They're not right. able to right. do anything um, because they're they're so high. Their IQ has dropped. They're just they're done. Um, so we send them to Echo to really de-escalate and take the time they need to gather themselves mm -hmm. and and get their brain back to a, a functioning. I'm able to regulate myself. I'm there. Um, and then after that, then the problem solving can begin. Right. And so then there's the problem solving. And it's, you know, what is, what is your concern? Um, mm. Well, here's my concern. You're not being safe. Um, okay. What, you know, what, what's, what happened? And then um, well, let's make a plan going forward. And then how are you going to fix the situation? Mm. And what it, that does is it really teaches them new neural pathways to walk. Because what we're working with with some kids is true survival brain. Right. They don't have the prefrontal, the prefrontal development to handle that. Right. And so what we get is fight or flight, That's which right. is just straight survival. And yes, no wonder they're doing what they're doing. They right. don't know any better. So we have to teach them these new skills. And then it's consistency. Okay, when this happens, this is what you can expect. This is what you can expect, which is why it takes every adult. That's because right. when the custodian catches you ripping down bulletin boards, he has to do that too. Right. You know? So it's that consistency. Nope, this is your neural pathway now. This is the pathway you walk. Um, so it's everything. Yeah. It's not just a program. Um, it, and it is it is a hundred percent of my staff. I, I they're amazing. It's um, also I think so two things. Mm -hmm. As a classroom teacher, I would I would love to know. Um, let's say my district doesn't, we're, we, are, we have not bought into mm -hmm. the idea of this particular, the social, um, social emotional learning mm -hmm. um, of ECHO or of RULER. Mm -hmm. What can I do as a classroom teacher? Um, I think I'm doing some things now, yeah. but as I think some of the other teachers <laughs> um, l lamented on the, on the hour-long special, mm -hmm. I should not have to be a therapist, but I am. Right. Right. I shouldn't have mm -hmm. to be a nurse, but I am. Mm -hmm. I, and I, maybe I should say I get to be. Because I actually do kind of love that. I love what I hear you're saying as, mm -hmm. as a leader is when my baby's lid is flipped, I don't flip my lid too. Right. Because then everybody's just walking around with flipped lids and yeah. nobody's getting served. So it sounds like you're, you've, you've helped shift the mindset of, of those of us that are caring for children that my lids can't flip too. Right. So what do I do in my classroom if I don't have the resources to have the custodian on staff, mm -hmm. the bus driver on, 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 um, on board, what can I do just in room 205 for my babies who really are coming with their lids flipped? Because whatever happened the night before, just mm -hmm. getting to the building huge. Was, was huge. Yep. Yeah, I, I would say recognize those small wins. Okay. And, and build relationships, and you do. Oh, yeah. And that's where, that's, that's where it starts. Okay. Um, and you're making an impact. And it's, it's planting those little seeds because you are making those new pathways for them. And I love the way one administrator from another district put it. Um, he witnessed a power struggle with a, a kid and a teacher, and he looked at her and he goes, "Remember, you have the executive function skills, mm. <laughs> not them." <laughs> right. So it's like, "Oh, okay, you're right." right. Sometimes I, I get you don't hot. need Sometimes to get it. They do, oh. but <laughs> we're the ones with the executive function right. skills. We don't need to buy into that power struggle. It's like, let it right. go, let it go. Um, but but you do, and problem solving is the other thing. Is, is restoring that and teaching right. them the empathy, you know, even without the programs, the empathy. That's you right. Know, how, how did that person feel? How do you think that person right. felt? Um, yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. This, this is great. I love that you're learning from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so great. Yes. Um, listen. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I, yeah, I just want to make sure we ask this one last question. Of course. I think okay. it's a question that will resonate okay. with a lot of parents. Okay. Autumn Foster wants to know, how do you recommend getting parents more engaged, particularly mm. those who aren't able to be in the classroom. Yes. Um, as a classroom teacher, I am out the box. Sometimes that used to get me in trouble. Um, but when parents start to show up, um, they t I stop getting in trouble. Um, so what I do in my classroom is we have a classroom Instagram account. Um, and in the beginning of the year, I send home as a part of the packet that goes home with every kid, my own Instagram social media waiver. Um, that gives me permission to take their images and put them online. Mm -hmm. um, they already have a media, um, something that goes home in the media packet. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of that as well. So if there's any tensions there, then I obviously obey that particular uh, form. But 
Um, what that gives me is that gives me an opportunity to highlight my students. Most of my parents are on social media. Most of my kids are on social media. And so you have to hide yourself. So the way I've kind of thwarted that is having one that's there. So at any given moment, whether we're doing Pi Day for uh, March 14th or whether we're doing swimming lessons at Columbia Pool, Save Columbia Pool, um, whether we are uh, going to high desert in a couple of weeks, their parents know that when they can't be in the room that they get the opportunity to see their kids featured on, on the gram. Um, I also have their cell phone numbers. I don't call them for things that are um, negative or derogatory or, or behavior related. I will all throughout the day maybe I'll send a text message and I'll just say look at your baby hard at work or we'll take a selfie and I'll send it to them and what that does is that uh, builds that bridge that I was talking about when mm -hmm. I said classroom to community. Um, I go to their games. I show up at their at their <laughs> at their homes. I'll do a home visit, not to see what's going on, but simply to see where's your room, where are you living, where are you at, what's your space, so that I know when you show up to the classroom, oh, you're the middle child. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're right here on the hip because of these reasons. But um, when my parents show up, I don't. Uh, they show up how they are. They show up in house shoes. They show up in leggings and bonnets. Um, they show up how they are, and they're welcome in room 205. And I think every parent of mm -hmm. every child that I've ever served should have felt that way and I hope they felt that way and continue to feel that way. Um, my job is just another part of their village. I'm just another person mm -hmm. um, and I think that authenticity, uh, that relationship building, that true care that I think parents feel make it easy to come on a field trip. I don't, if they can't come, they can't come. Like it's okay. Um, but I, I try to do the small things that build in the social media a little mm -hmm. bit that take the pressure off of what's going on um, that lets them know what's happening without them feeling like, well, I'm not at a PTA meeting or because that sometimes feels a little exclusive and it feels like well, if I can't be engaged in these ways that I don't care about my kids, that's not the case. I just bring your kid to you throughout the day. That's a small thing um, that I do that, that seems to work. Um, and then as it goes, I've done parent-teacher conferences in homes. I've met at a, at a coffee shop instead of it being on the turf of the school. Um, I just try to think outside the box. I try to be in the community of the kids I serve. That makes it easy to see parents. Yeah. Um, and then I just try to be authentically Nicole so that you get me the same <laughs> every single time you meet me. Um, and I just, that's it. I, I hope that that kind of answers. I know that that's that doesn't right. work for everyone, but parent engagement is critical. It's what my dissertation is on. Um, I don't believe we can do this work without parents. Nice. What, as a principal, how, you know, her question said, yeah. you know, how can we get oh. them more? If you don't mm -hmm. have teachers like Nicole right. doing the social media, what's your advice to parents? Mm -hmm. I, I, one of the things that we tried this year uh, with our parents, because one, one aspect that is so critical is getting everyone to speak that common language. That's right. Okay. Um, and so we invited parents in. We had an emotional intelligence night. Okay. Um, we didn't want to call it social emotional learning because it was like, no, your kids are brilliant at emotional yes. intelligence. Um, and they are. And they, they have done amazing. But we wanted to introduce that language at home. Mm -hmm. um, so we picked um, a project from each of our, our big programs. Um, one was a PAX vision. And that's the one that empowers the kids to um, create the classroom environment that they want. So they list a bunch of words about what they want to hear more, do more, see more, feel more wow. in their class, and then less of. Um, so we had families build that for their house of what they want to hear more of and feel wow. more of and then less of, hoping that that, that would empower the kids and the families right. to connect on that level. Um, and then maybe some of the language would transfer right. over, like, you know, this is, this is more PAX, um, this is more peaceful. Um, and then the other one we did was a big um, refrigerator board with the mood meter that I shared with you. Mm -hmm. um, so that the mood meter is, is a piece of ruler and I, it identifies which quadrant you're feeling emotions in. And they can move their little piece wherever they are at that moment yeah. in that quadrant. So that it's a little bit easier to have those discussions at home mm -hmm. about, oh gosh, you know, look, you're, you're in the red. What's going on? Mm -hmm. What happened? Um, I know with my own kids, um, they come home and you know something's wrong, right. um, but you don't know if they're sad, you don't know if they're tired, you don't know if they're mad. Um, so just having that visual of, to start those conversations right. of how was your day, what's going on, why are you in the blue, <laughs> um, okay. just gets families talking about it. So we're, we're trying to integrate that language so that it's, 
it's across the board. So when a kid comes home and goes, I'm yellow, the parents don't go, oh, why? Oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do to yourself? <laughs> That's great. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you both so yes, much. Thank Again, you. Again, we could talk about this yes, all night. We yeah. could. Um, um, <laughs> thank you for who, everyone who yes, commented. Thank you. Yes, hopefully your you guys work is can, so important. And hopefully yes. you both can get on the KGW Facebook page yeah. and feel free to answer back yeah, as awesome. yourself okay. any yeah. questions any comments that you want yeah. to add um, mm -hmm. thank you for watching at home thank you if you watched our classrooms in crisis solutions yes. special thank you. we are as a station so committed to this issue there's so much more to talk about yeah and always we're just, just getting, getting started mm -hmm. exactly yep. thanks again awesome thank Bye. you